So far in that time, there have been 64 scholars that have actually been inducted. 49 of them are male scholars, 15 are female. Female are rather less than the men because it was a later starter. But still there are 64. Of that 64, 24 have already played first class cricket. There'll be more to come because they're still working their way through. Now if it, you do all your mental arithmetic, which I have trouble with, but to save you the time, that's nearly 40% of the classes are first class cricketers. All those 24, seven have gone on and become <coughs> Australian cricketers. They've got their baggy green caps, which is fantastic. I remember sitting with David Gillard when we first started back in 2006 and he said, well, if we can get a couple of baggy green caps in the first five or six years, we'll be doing pretty well. Well, we finished up at seven. So it's a program has been very good success. Josh, it's pretty daunting when someone like me introduces you as another Glenn McGrower in the making. How do you feel about that comparison? Uh, yeah, it's probably not the first time I've heard it, but... Um, it's, it's not a bad rap. It's a very good rap. Uh, it's something I had to put up with or, or take the praise of, of another fast bowler. Obviously, Glenn McGrath was such a great bowler. And, um, to be mentioned in the same sentence as him over the last few years has just been um, outstanding and hopefully I can somewhat live up to the, to the reputation. But um, yeah, 100, 120 odd tests is a, is a long way off, yeah. Uh, Cara, I think what we'd love to hear from you, especially for the, for the younger ones, how important is this sort of support, this sort of foundation, people like Basil Sellers? This scholarship, when I received it, was actually ideal timing. I was just finishing high school and coming from Grafton, it's quite a long way from Sydney, so I had to relocate away from my parents. I was lucky enough to have some family down here, but without the support of the Basil Sellers Scholarship, I wouldn't have been able to train as hard as I did, and I, there's no way I would have been able to make my interview for the Breakers in that first season. And Josh, no doubt you've got a similar story to tell. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, there's a lot of, lot of uh, travelling around um, in the country to get from town to town to play different games. And um, Basil's uh, scholarship came at a uh, perfect time, as Cara said, and um, to, to get gear and, and, and use it for flights down to Sydney for training and, and things like that. It was just, um, yeah, it was just very helpful. Okay, we're here with uh, Shane Castle. Shane, what a, a tremendous experience uh, and an honour tonight. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, thankful for what Basil Sellers does for um, junior cricketers across the state and um, you know it's going to go a long way towards all the young cricketers here tonight fulfilling their dreams of um, going as far as they can in, in cricket. Just come back from the World Cup so uh, how was that as an experience? Yeah it was a tremendous experience obviously um, being a late call up uh, the day before the first game against England um, you know, it was a bit of a shock but it all happened really quickly but you know I was just thankful to get a get a run and um, you know, I ended up playing a couple of games and you know, I was thrilled with uh, everything that happened. Okay, here with uh, Harry Conway and Grinder Sandu, boys. Um, a great night and a uh, great honour to get these awards. Yeah, definitely really, uh, really proud to have received the, uh, the scholarship for Basil. Really nice guy and um, yeah, that, that'll go a long way to supporting um, travel and other expenses uh, related to cricket this year. It'll be brilliant, yeah. Yeah, it helps out, especially with being bowlers. You always need any spikes, boots here and there, so um, that helps out there. Now it was a pretty amazing World Cup for both of you. Um, let's start with you, Harry. Um, hat trick. Uh, it was a, it was a pretty amazing hat trick as well. Three clean bowls. You look pretty happy afterwards. Yeah, yeah, very uh, very pleased. And uh, yeah, the boys got around me. I was uh, I was really happy. It was uh, a great time to do it. And um, yeah, just yeah, got got a bit lucky on the on the second and third one. But um, yeah, I couldn't believe it at the time. It was a great feeling. Gurinder, big tournament for you. You picked up uh, quite a few wickets. Uh, disappointing in the end against India, but you got beaten by a brilliant hundred. Yeah, Umar Chan played well that day. We gave, had a few chances, but uh, we didn't really take him, so I guess our fault that we lost, you could say. But um, yeah, good tournament, all the boys. We were five out of five going into that game, so everyone was on a high. Everyone was pretty happy, and um, I guess, yeah, it's a better team, or better player sort of got them home on that day. So Celeste, very successful leg spinner with Campbelltown Camden Club. You were described as a late bloomer. Tell us about how you got into cricket. Um, oh, it all started when I was, um, well, I started playing when I was pretty young. So um, I had a bit of encouragement from dad and from some friends in primary school and things and started like that. But um, it took a while for me to get into the New South Wales sort of underage system. I didn't make 15s and I had to, um, yeah, work pretty hard to make 17s. So yeah, it took a while. Um, not making the 15s and having to work that little bit harder is, is 
big motivation for you? Uh, definitely. I think it's something that's resonated with me ever since. Um, just having to always work hard for a position uh, just pushes you that little bit further to be better than you would have if you made it easily or yeah, if you're a bit more of a given. So. Now last year you um, were one of the leading bowlers in grade cricket and you got to play for New South Wales second eleven. What was it like playing at that representative level? Um, I felt very fortunate to be given the chance. Um, it's something that I'd always uh, aspired to. I always said if I made the second eleven I'd be pretty happy with how I've, how I've gone. So when I got the call up last year I was very happy and um, yeah it was a great opportunity.